The wonderful news from brain science is that it's never too late to alter the architecture of the brain. And in Mindsight, I talk about a 92-year-old patient who himself had a distorted Mindsight lens and through the course of psychotherapy, even at 92, was able to change his life so much that you could almost feel how the synaptic connections in his brain were now integrating his nervous system. So that in the end of therapy, his wife called me up and asked me if I had given her husband a brain transplant. And the news about all that is that we are never done sculpting the architecture of our brains. The whole idea then is to use the focus of attention to move the brain toward an integrated state. And when we use Mindsight to integrate our brains, our relationships thrive, our sense of vitality is enlivened, and we have a deeper sense of meaning and connection as we go through the course of our lives. One of the things that many people don't realize is that the way human beings have changed over the last 40,000 years has been influenced a lot by what's called cultural evolution. And certainly in the last 10,000 years, the major force on the change of how we've become as adults is through our cultural environment through the communication patterns that are set up in our relationships with each other, but also in the symbols we have within our societies. Now, the good news about that is that when we notice cultural evolution is moving us in a certain direction, with intention and purpose, we can actually move it in a more positive direction if we choose to. And one way that synaptic changes have happened in recent times is that people have lost sight of the mind. In many ways our modern culture has become mindless and so awakening ourselves as individuals, as people in relationships, within families, within groups, within schools, within communities, all these ways are ways in which we can promote a more mind sight full world. And what that means is we honor the internal world of ourselves and others and we develop one another's ability to actually modify that internal world toward integration, toward well-being, toward compassion. And so human evolution does not have to be a passive process. It can be an active way where we can take a world full of coldness, and despair and bring hope and compassion into our everyday lives nearby and throughout the communities in which we live. When we understand that the mind can change the brain itself, we become empowered to actually transform our lives. And when we look from a Mindsight point of view at how we can deeply know what's happening in our brains, when we can look very clearly at what's happening in our relationships, what happens is we're able to actually see patterns where we're stuck in life. For example, we keep on doing the same thing over and over again. Life becomes rigid. Or we may find that there are patterns in our lives where life has become chaotic, we have outbursts of emotion or impulsive behaviors. These two banks, if you will, outside of a river of rigidity on the one hand and chaos on the other, help us know when something is missing. And that something is called integration. And when we're integrated, when we link different parts of our internal world and our relationships, we're in the flow of a river that has the sense of harmony. It's flexible, it's adaptive, it has a coherence to it that holds together and it's energized and stable. Mindsight is the ability for us to see within ourselves, to dive deeply into the sea inside. The way we develop Mindsight is through our relationships with our parents initially. 
Parents reflect to us what they see going on in our inner world, not just noticing our behaviors, but for example, reflecting to us about our feelings, what we might be thinking, remembering, perceiving. All of these are the ways we get signals back from our caregivers that help us see the internal world with clarity. But what's not known is the scientific finding that when parents don't provide clear feedback, then the lens of mind sight becomes distorted. We may not be able to see within ourselves or within other people if our parents have been very distant emotionally or if our parents are intrusive what can happen is the mind sight lens becomes very distorted by the responses of others so when someone feels something it floods us and we're chaotically involved in their own emotional response so rather than knowing ourselves we just become confused as to who we are and who they are in still other kinds of relationships called attachment between children and their parents, we may have been terrified. And in these examples, we become disorganized and our mind sight lens fragments. So at moments of stress, we may literally disassociate the way we're thinking from how we're feeling. We may have different aspects of ourselves that get shut down and shut off. And in these ways, what happens is we are fragmenting our internal world. For other children, when their parents are a source of terror, they have the experience of what's called disorganized attachment. And there, the mind sight lens becomes fragmented. And as that child grows into adolescence and adulthood, under stress, things can become very dissociated. They can disconnect from their own bodily sensations. They can become fragmented in how they think. And in all of these different ways, our attachment experiences with our caregivers shape the lens through which we see the internal world of ourselves and others. The fantastic news is that when we make sense of our own lives, we can actually strengthen the mind sight lens so that it's not distorted, that it's not fragmented, that it's not shut down, that instead it's clear, strong, and give us an acuity of how we see the internal world. And by giving us an acuity, what it means is it gives us a sense of wisdom about what the internal world is. The guy I told you about, I don't know why he got it for me. It's really never cold enough to wear. You want to try it? Not so good. Only leftover strips. See? Far too short. No long hairs. And she made him bleed. She made him go away. So whose fault was it's it then? It's this bitch's fault because she let my man have her. And she didn't say nothing. She didn't scream. She didn't do nothing. So those things that she told you to her who, who, who else was going to love me was there a time even in its smallest measurement that you loved me at all how can anyone love pebble in their shoes